Hello guys, so I'm back with another tutorial on the vertex animation texture uh, topic and in this video I'm gonna cover a few things. Obviously we uh, talk about the anime to texture plugin and the native one that Epic has. So uh, we're gonna fix an issue that may occur in case if you use the instance or the IRC instance static mesh to animate your characters. And I'm talking about not the animation on the static basis, but if your characters are movable. So by default, the approach that uh, Epic has in their material functions uh, looks like this once you start moving your uh, instances. So you may see that the role position offset works uh, incorrectly, and I'm going to fix it both for the vertex and the bone animations. And the last one is, I'm going to show you how you can randomize animations for your crowds or to build up a simple uh, state, uh, state machine to switch between different animations for all of your instances. So guys, just before we start, uh, if you haven't seen yet, I highly recommend you to follow up to my YouTube channel and check uh, two previous parts of the Vertex Animation Texture tutorials so the first one is how you can recreate the whole set like the tool set to bake your uh, what textures uh, completely free and the second part is how you can enable uh, to use in the night with the what textures but for those of you who don't have enough time or just don't want to recreate on your own uh, you know that i have the patreon and right now i'm like i start publishing on the fab so you can simply acquire it here or there and your support is highly uh, appreciated also guys please don't forget about the prices because as you can see there are not too many options to choose between and obviously my prices are much lower than my opponents have i'm not gonna say that one product is better or one product is worse I just think twice and be smart Obviously, 95% of those functions that you probably need for your project uh, may be achieved with the lower price, especially if you prefer using my Patreon, not the Fab version. So, as I told you earlier, I do have two different setups. The first one here is the bone animation, the second one is for the vertex animation. I'm gonna start with the bone because uh, my first tutorial was based on using this approach. Uh, and as we're gonna change things inside the material functions and those functions are uh, in the engine in the plugin uh, in the engine plugin content I highly recommend you to make those functions as a copy and place it somewhere in your project and use those references instead because once the engine version is going to be updated uh, the feature that you use simply won't be ruined so uh, the first one is bone position and normal and uh, all assets from the plugin content is under the following folder. So it's the plugins, uh, anim to texture content, material functions. So here the first one, bone and position normal. Now you may see that uh, here we have two different outputs and the default uh, setup is that we use the local space. Uh, in both nodes but as we use the instant static mesh we need to switch the transform position from the local space to the instance and particle space we also need to subtract uh, from uh, subtract mesh particle pivot location and it's not for the mesh particles but it's for the meshes as the instance or the hierarchical instant static meshes and the particles so the two separate uh, things it's just how they named the material function uh, input or output also we need to change here for the normal back to the instance particle space so if I press apply now if I launch the game you may see that everything looks fine and that's it so guys now let's fix up the vertex uh, animation so uh, as you can see here on the left uh, it's my uh, 
what uh, demonstrational blueprint. So here I can change between the bone animation and the vertex one. With the bone one, everything is okay. We just made those changes. But if I go with the vertex one and go by five, you may see that we have the issue that we uh, got earlier. So to make uh, things okay, we should look for the unpack vertex normal and unpack vertex position. So they are at the same folder. Unpack vertex normal, vertex position. So here are my modified versions, but uh, I set everything as the default as it used to be uh, in the engine plugin content. So we have the same, the local space to the tanking space and the same setup here from local space. So simply change those to the instance, apply instance and subtract the mesh pivot location, apply now. We need to recompile everything in the, if we launch the setup. Everything is okay. And that's also it. So the last part of tutorial is to show you how you can play random animations on all of your instances so your uh, crowd will look more organic. There are different ways how you can achieve this result and the way that you see on the screen is just my representation. So each time I press one key I'm going to clear the array of predefined uh, animation that I store each time. Once the animation should be changed via different conditions. I also need to iterate over all of my instances to assign them the new animations. As you know, that asset uh, store our animations in a particular order. So with the random node, I can rearrange the order and store it to the array like this. We also need to have uh, two maps the current frame per each instance and the previous frame uh, per each instance. Uh, the map is the key is integer and the value is float. Uh, we need both of them because we need to have a smooth transition uh, once the animation should be changed. So everything happens next here under the calculate current frame function. So uh, each frame we need to iterate over our animation list uh, array and we store the uh, element index as the two different uh, variables. I use local variables here, so my graph looks cleaner. The uh, idea is to get the animation instance from our uh, animation list and calculate the current frame. It's done by this calculation that I covered in my first tutorial. So basically we need to subtract from the start frame our end frame, make it plus one, we also need to know uh, the elapsed time, so we get real time in seconds multiplied by our current uh, frame rate. It's 30, it's the frame rate that we use to play our animation. We divide it by everything and add the start frame. So that's how we get our current frame. And we store the animation index and the current frame inside our map. And that's it. Now here, back to our function. In the complete, we need to store the current frame as our previous frame and play a simple uh, timeline. This timeline is a lerp between 0 and 1 over 1 second or uh, the amount of seconds that you want your animations to be played. And we store it as the transition alpha. Next one, we need to execute the update animations function. So here we need to iterate over our instances so we get instance count from our instatic mesh component. Use for loop, we store the index to the local variable. We need to set three different custom data values. The current frame, the previous frame, and the alpha. Those that we use for our uh, main material function, which looks like this. And the vertex uh, also looks similar. So as you can see here, we use two different frames. So we have the interpolation between states. And that's how the transition looks smooth. So uh, we need to extract the value from our map using the index and place it here, here and here. Make sure to have those indexes 
at a proper value. Also, you need to select Mac uh, Mark Render State Dirty. Otherwise, you won't see any changes. And that's it. That's how we have the randomness in our animations. And I'm going to show you it right now. So let's start with the vertex animation. And here I have three simple animations. So let me relaunch it. Yep. As you can see, they all play different animations. Press one key, they switch them. Bone animations I have more, so let me show you. This let's go five by five. It's gonna play. That's how they work. So if you have the proper amount and the proper uh, arranged animations, so they match the particular behavior. And with this, you can simply make those crowds for the background and so on. And the most interesting here is that it's the night, right? So and the last one is uh, also for the sake of the demo. I'm going to show you how you can simulate the pedestrian sort of behavior. So it's to show that instances that are moving uh, don't have any artifacts uh, using the Ninai, the Instatic Mesh and so on, both for the vertex and the bone uh, methods. So uh, here I have the function also on the event C called move to random location. And on the event graph, I have the custom event called build new root. So uh, we also need to have the random location list. It's the array of vectors. So each instance will know where to go at a specific time. So we uh, each time this event is called, we need to clear our array list. We also need to iterate to assign each instance the new location. Uh, I use random point in bound box and decide the size of it. So it's the area on my map somewhere here. And uh, I add those values to the array. And on the complete, I set current frame as the previous frame. Also for the transitions. Uh, each time I press uh, number two key, I switch between the states, so it's like walk and run. Also to show you that it may be used based on the condition to work as the state machine. Uh, on the calculate current frame here, we need to make a little bit different logic. So based also, it's for the sake of the demo, whether it's the vertex or the bone uh, animation, my uh, run and walk animations are stored at the different indexes. So uh, to simulate the pedestrian behavior, you simply need to know the index of your walk or the run animation stored in the data asset and do the same calculation, store the current frame. Uh, update animation are the same so the same iteration and so uh, as you can see uh, based on the boolean that I decide on the beginning of the uh, logic we're going to use the current frame or the previous frame that we just calculated to store the same uh, behavior and move to random location function so we also need to iterate we store our instance as the uh, temporal variable. Uh, we get, based on this index, the location for each instance. It's our target location. For the current location and current rotation, we use get instance transform from the static mesh based on the index. Also need to be the world space. Then we check whether our current and the target location are equal. If they are equal, we need to build up the new root 
to call this event, right? But if it's not, we simply need to update the transform of our instance. So we get the instastatic mesh component, the index of our instance, and we interpolate between our location and rotation. I use the constant uh, interpolation. And here I define the speed based on the boolean that I have. Rotation is the following. We need to find look at rotation. So we're going to always uh, look at our target. And as our character is 90 degrees rotate, we need to subtract it from the uh, your, uh, the number of 90. And that's it. So if I press play, you may see. You may see what happened. And that's it. If I press 2, they start walking. They start running. So guys, with this being said, it's the end of the tutorial. And uh, I want to thank you all for your support. And please leave your feedback, subscribe to my channel, uh, share uh, through your friends. Or maybe some media and in case if you want to support me you can uh, follow up the link under this video to my patreon to uh, acquire a subscription or to buy my assets on the fab um, see you soon guys